Good evening. This is CTV News for Wednesday, May 3rd. I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Patricia Vallone. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, a man is found shot to death in a gas station parking lot in Suitland early this morning. Detectives are now working to identify and arrest the suspect. Officers responded to the Exxon station in the 4700 block of Silver Hill Road just after midnight. There they found the victim, 27-year-old Wayne Pope of Suitland, suffering from a gunshot wound. He died at the scene. The preliminary investigation reveals that the suspect approached Pope while he was pumping gas and tried to rob him. A struggle ensued and then police say the suspect shot that victim. Anyone with information or who may have been in the area at the time is asked to contact Prince George's police. The state of Prince George's economy is good. That's the word from County Executive Rashawn Baker. He made those remarks at today's business roundtable. Baker listed a number of achievements that have happened under his watch. He says property values are up 61 percent since 2010. The new Carrollton Transportation Hub is the new home to 2U, an education technology company with nearly 1,000 employees. And Baker also spoke about the county's graduation rates, which he says are up 81%. Income has, given, has gone from 72,000 a year to 76,000, which is above the national average. Um, and so the economy has turned around. The MGM revenues are giving us the ability to do more things. And we're seeing development. At, I think the most important part of this speech was uh, development is taking place not in one area, but all over, all 500 square miles, there is something happening in the county which attracts more people to the county, which means we can invest more in our schools, transportation, our health care. Now, Baker ended his remarks expressing his confidence in getting the Purple Line and the FBI headquarters in Prince George's County. Some parents at Duval High School are calling for leadership changes amid concerns over student safety and poor teacher instruction. A petition to oust the current principal and make a popular resident principal the permanent leader has garnered more than 900 signatures. Parent Keisha Chase helped organize the effort and says their concerns have fallen on deaf ears with administrators. She says they recently tried to meet with school officials but were given the runaround. Chase also says the reforms put in place after a series of alleged misconduct cases are taking teachers out of the classrooms for extended periods of time. School board member David Murray says the pendulum has swung we probably too far. Have more teachers out of the classroom um, than probably anywhere else in the entire country. The pendulum has swung way too far to the other side, and teachers really don't feel like they can do their jobs without, you know, um, fearing repercussions, and that's a problem. But the main problem is that it's taking us months to do these investigations and months to put teachers back in the classroom, and there's no reason it should be taking that long because while they're out, student learning um, isn't happening at the rate that it should when they have a substitute in the classroom. Now, Chase tells CTV that a meeting between parents and Duval school administrators has been set for Monday, May 15th at 6 in the evening. Prince George's police hold a teen driving safety class for county high school students today. It's meant to educate students about distractive driving and other dangers as they prepare to get their driver's licenses. CTV's Darcy Spencer has the story. The event happened here at the education and training facility in Upper Marlboro. This car just part of the demonstration today. What can happen if you drive distracted? Many of the teens involved in the program are from area high schools and they have not yet begun to drive. And this program started with a very important message from a mom who lost her teenage son just days before prom. He got into his car. He drove for about a mile and a half lost control of his car, he flipped his car, he was thrown from the car and killed instantly. Anita Brockett says she lost her 17-year-old son, Nolan, when he crashed his car after leaving an underage drinking party. I think it all comes down to making a good choice. I mean, it's, I, I understand that it's hard when you're in certain situations to make that good choice, but it's about them making a good choice, but also helping their friends make a good choice. Students also got to hear from the police chief and other speakers about the dangers facing teens on the road. What I'm going to ask you to do, and I ask adults to do this all the time, is please, when you get in that vehicle, when you begin to drive, put that smartphone in your backpack in the back seat, put it in the glove compartment, put it someplace else so you're not tempted by it. 
Firefighters demonstrated the jaws of life, how they have to remove people from a car when there has been an accident. Also, teens got to wear goggles to show them what it would be like to drive after drinking. Now, we spoke to students about what they learned at today's event. In today's society, it's all about, you know, on social media, you know, Twitter, we have Facebook, Snapchat, and, you know, teens are really distracted and, you know, you know, the, your friend uh, texts you, you know, and you're, and you're driving and you're putting someone else at risk. This could be someone's daughter, someone's son. Usually when people are sleepy, they still drive. I didn't know you shouldn't, like, drive because, you know, if, if you lay for, if you work overnight and then you have to work in the morning, that's dangerous. I didn't know. I just thought you could just get to your destination, but it's actually dangerous than I thought. Some of the students we spoke to say they were already aware of some of the dangers facing them, but they say it was a good idea to reinforce that safety message as many prepare to get behind the wheel for the very first time. In Upper Marlboro, Darcy Spencer for CTV News. And this was the first ever driver's education course of its kind to be held in the county. The National Transportation Safety Board and the National Organization for Youth Safety also participated.